Hello, my name is Sarah and I'm an artist with hospice and today I'll be bringing you the exercise of painting on canvas. Notice how I said exercise and that is how I want you to think of this. I don't want you to get caught up in the idea of a final product because that stresses us out and I'm not here to make you stressed out. I'm here to bring some peace to you. So there's no pressure here. Yours does not have to look like mine. Um, again, if you don't like it, you don't have to keep it. You don't have to hand it down to the great, great grandchildren. You can simply throw it in the garbage. So this exercise today is centering around being at peace. So you are free to be at peace. You are free to let go of anything that is weighing you down. Allow this exercise to bring you peace in the present moment. Clear your mind of worry and struggle. And with each brush stroke, let go of fear and doubt. And with each brush stroke, become more and more at peace. I will walk you through this painting. When I think of peace, I think of blues and a bird in flight. However, you do not have to paint what I'm showing you today. You are always free to create whatever it is you want. So please keep that in mind. There are a couple rules that I've learned in art school when working on canvas. And that is never to let any of the white canvas show through. If you want something white, use white paint. It's just considered poor form. but if you don't worry about that, I won't worry about it either. Of course, you're not being graded on this. So we're working with acrylic paints, and you should have two paint brushes with you, an angled brush and a smaller round tip brush. You'll need paper towel, water, a palette, and paint. Now, some might be very intimidated by a blank white canvas, but I don't want you to be. I'm going to teach you how to do this technique, but you can paint your canvas however you want. You might go from light to dark. You might want a very colorful canvas. Notice on the colors on our palette. We've got a bright pink and yellow. Together, those could make an orange. You've got a lot of white to make a pastel of any of these colors. This dark blue on your plate is called phthalo blue. There's a lot of pigment in it. A little bit goes a long way. And then of course you've got aqua. You can make a green, a lime green by mixing yellow and uh, yellow and aqua together. You can make a purple by mixing white, pink, and a tiny bit of that dark blue. Again, you can create anything you want on this canvas. I will show you this. You might want to do swirls. You might want to do just blocks of color. You might not want to add a bird later on, and that is fine. Again, this is just your piece to enjoy. There's no pressure here. You're already brave for deciding to do this, so good job. I always like to water my paint, <clears throat> my paint down a little bit. I'm going to add some water and I'm going to start with this aqua and I'm starting with my angled brush and I'm going to just make a crisscross for now. That is going to be able to allow us to orient our lines. But from now on, when you make a line with this angled brush, I want you to go skinny here and then press down to make it bigger. It's really easy to do. And if you mess up, don't worry about it. So no pressure, applying pressure. Do you see how the lines get thicker as they go out? I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do that a series of times. No pressure, more pressure. So the lines naturally are getting thicker as they go out. That's going to give us the illusion of some depth. And I'm just going to make a round of this color. In the beginning, I'm limiting my palette just to the blues and shades of blue because if I were to add too many colors at once, sometimes it'll get muddy, but you're welcome to experiment with that. Now remember what I was saying in the reflection with each brush stroke, let go of any fears you might be feeling, any doubts you might be having. 
I love painting because it allows us to stay present in the moment, which is a beautiful thing because really that's all we, any of us have is this moment. The reason I like to water it down, I feel it goes much smoother on in the canvas. So if you're seeing like white dots coming through, you either want to add more paint to your brush or add a little water to your paint. Some of you might like to paint in texture, which means real thick paint. You might like the way that looks. You can go ahead and do that. Just we'll get you a little bit more paint. All right, next, again, I'm, this blue here, it's phthalo blue, a lot of pigment. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to wash my brush off. I'm going to scoop some of my white over here. I'm going to pick up a little bit, a little bit of that blue. And I want to have a lighter kind of blue. Again, now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into where there's areas that there's white. I encourage you to listen to music as you paint. Listen to your favorite music on, on your phone. Maybe you're staying at a hospital or an inpatient center. Uh, oftentimes we have CD players that you can borrow. And again, just note how I'm starting out not applying pressure, now I am applying pressure. I'm just going to make my round, oops, a little aqua got in there, that's fine. You don't see me freaking out. So just a reminder that art, and what we're doing here, it's not about control, it's more about surrender. So I'm just surrendering to the process here. I'm allowing myself to become more at peace with each brush stroke. Okay. I'm going to move on to a darker blue now. I'm going to use straight up blue. Straight up dark phthalo blue. This time I'm being a little more intentional. I want there to be some white left because if you can see in the example, we're gonna, you can introduce some purples and other colors. So I'm gonna just allow some places to be white. Again, this is meant to relax you this is meant to bring you peace. This is not meant to stress you out. If you are feeling stressed out, you're doing something wrong. Again, you do not have to keep this painting. This is an exercise. Consider it an exercise. Now what I'm going to do with the remaining white spaces, I'm going to actually paint them white because later on I'm going to want to come back and add some yellow highlights, some purple, maybe some greens. So I'm washing that brush off real good. And don't worry that your, your water's this blue. It's not really going to affect your white paint. It looks like it will at the beginning, but it'll just be a real pale blue. 
So now I'm going to go around and fill in my white spaces with white paint. It's overlapping some of the color, which is fine. Some of the light is turning, some of the white is turning blue. That's okay. We just want to have a lighter base to paint the paintings, to paint the lighter colors. Sometimes you might get too much blue and you'll have to start over a little bit with that white. Again, allow this exercise to free your mind, to bring you peace. I try to paint an hour every day just for peace of mind. Painting and any kind of art making, any type of gardening, cooking, it allows us to be present in the moment. That's one way we can reduce anxiety and stress. I'm just about done. Right now, I have shades of blue on my canvas, and I'm thinking about, well, I want to introduce some more color. I'm going to start with maybe yellow, a pale yellow. I'm going to do a pale yellow. You might like those bolder colors, which is fine. I'm going to add some yellow and white together. I moved on to my smaller brush, because these are just going to be little shots of color here and there kind of illuminating the bird, the bird's journey upward. If you want to make a pretty peach orange, bring over a little bit of that yellow into there. I mean yellow and pink together, that'll give you a peach orange. So if you want to make a little bit of orange, you can mix yellow and pink. This will be real bright. Let's see if you like this. Some might like that. It's pretty dark for me, so I'm going to add some white to it. Just add some. Be confident in your brush strokes. Just have some fun. Again, you can paint over anything you don't like. All right, I'm going to make purple. Again, bring some white over to near my pink. Mix some pink and white together. I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of blue. Now I have purple. What a pretty color. It's almost like a lilac. All right. One last step before we trace our bird onto the canvas. And that is I wanted to create a little bit of movement in the background, so I'm just going to go to my white and on my darkest lines, I'm just going to make some white dashes. Or you can just kind of drag your brush skinny, let it down, any way you want to do it. You can also use the opposite end of your paintbrush and make dots going that way. That's an option. I 
And again, feel free to add your own twist to this. You might really find enjoyment in just painting lines on this canvas, and that's fine. Keep doing that. It's whatever, whatever brings you some peace in this moment. Now, before we stencil our bird, you're going to want your canvas to be completely dry. If you painted watered down paint, it should only take 20, 25 minutes to, to dry. If you painted with a lot of texture, it could take a few hours. Now, I provided you with a bird stencil. You do not have to draw the bird on here. You don't have to draw anything on here. If you like the way your background looks by itself, then I recommend you just keeping it that way. Or you could add perhaps your favorite scripture or a song lyric. I'm outlining my bird with black pen. Just find a writing utensil in your room. It could be a pen or a pencil or a marker. Now that the bird is outlined, I'm going to move on with my round brush and white paint. I'm just going to paint that bird in. Take your time. If you're watering your paint down, you, you might need to do two layers. Or if you want the bird to be textured, that's a good look. Just really plop it on there. Plop that paint on. And I'm not following the lines exactly. The lines are there just to give you a suggestion of where things go. But I don't want you to have a death grip on your paintbrush. I don't want you to feel like you have to color exactly in the lines because you don't. So you should have a loose grip on your paintbrush. This should not be stressful. I kind of like to outline mine first and then paint it in. I applied my paint a little thicker to make it stand out a little bit. So now that our bird is colored in white, you might consider adding some highlights like I did in the example. I'm going to start with maybe a yellow or that peachy orange and I'm just going to give it some color on the on the left side of the belly of the bird and then just a little bit in the wings as I'm just following those curved lines of the wings and put some on the tail. You know, pink would look nice too, a nice light pink. Maybe you could put a little highlight on the bird's head. So now that's done. You have the option of leaving your bird white like this, or you can outline it. I forgot my black paint, so I can outline mine with that dark phthalo blue. Or you don't have to outline it. Let me show you an easy way to do the eyeball, though. Use the opposite end of your round brush, get a little paint, and carefully just make a dot. Look how easy that was. That's much more easier than trying to use your brush and getting that. So now what I'm going to do is make an outline with the blue. The key here is to water, really water this blue paint down like to almost where it's like an ink. This is the part where people always tell me they feel they messed up because they make 
they feel like they make the lines too thick. So if you're worried about doing that, let it dry and ask somebody, ask your nurse or ask, maybe you have a Sharpie marker in the house or in the center where you're staying. But I'm gonna use a paintbrush. I watered it down. I have a loose grip on my paintbrush. And as you can see in the example, I don't, I'm not trying to outline this perfectly. I am going to, whoop, this is quickly. Okay, I'm gonna water that down. Now I'm gonna, I like to make maybe loops in the wings like that. I'm not trying to outline it perfect because when we, when we try to do that, we're going to maybe hold our paintbrush with a tighter grip and then our hands are going to shake and it's not going to work out like you want it to. Voila! There is your painting representing peace. So my wish for you today is that you can be at peace, that you can let go of anything that is weighing you down. Because when you can let go of anything that weighs you down, you're going to make room for things that will make you happier. So I hope you enjoy painting with me and tune in for more lessons. Thank you.